All right. Hi, I think we're live. Hey, everyone. How's everyone doing? A big warm welcome from Dallas, Texas, and welcome to this Garden to Table live event on Facebook. So today, Yumlish is collaborating with North Texas Food Bank to bring you all a demo of how to grow eggplant in your very own garden and use it to cook sauteed eggplant pasta. And if you don't have the recipe, it's all good. We'll cook along together. You can make plenty of notes and cook it later. So who am I? I'm the founder of Yumlish. And at Yumlish, we provide nutrition therapy for people who have diabetes. And so that's what I do. And we are working together today with Emily and Megan over at North Texas Food Bank. Say hi, you guys. And so they curated this recipe. They curated this recipe here for you today that we'll be sharing. Uh, we love to post healthy tips and tricks. So if you want to follow us on Facebook, we are at Yumlish. So you can follow us there. And if you are cooking along with us here today, make sure to tag hashtag Yumlish Live. And so any whatever you're doing with your eggplant, if you're making the sauteed eggplant pasta with us, share pictures. We love to share it on our social media as well. So we'll go ahead and get started here today. And like I said, we're starting out in the garden. And so the first person up today is going to be Emily. And there's Emily. Hello. And so Emily is the garden coordinator over at North Texas Food Bank. She helps monitor and grow seasonal ingredients at the base over in Plano, Texas. North Texas Food Bank helps to distribute food to those who need it most and close hunger gaps across North Texas. So today, Emily is going to be teaching you how to build a place to grow your own eggplant, the varieties of eggplant, and how to help them thrive in the environment. So if you have any questions, post them right here. We're ready to answer your, like, all your questions, and we'll go ahead and get started here. But before that, I want to also introduce Megan. Megan, where'd you go? She's there. There she is. All right. <laughs> so that's Megan. And Megan is a nutrition education coordinator over at North Texas Food Bank. She helps people understand what healthy food can look like for them and increases access to healthy food um, through North Texas Food Bank. So after Emily's cooking, uh, after Emily's gardening demonstration, we will show you how to cook the sauteed eggplant pasta. So talk about fresh food straight from garden onto your table. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. And like I said, if you're cooking along with us, if you've got comments, throw them below. And if you are cooking along with us, um, make sure to tag Yumlish Live. So let's get started. Emily, you ready? Absolutely. Let's get going. What you got for us? All right. We're getting our mic plugged in. We're good to go. Awesome. Okay. So yes, like Sharon said, my name is Emily. I am the guard coordinator here at the North Texas Food Bank. Um, today we are going to be talking about eggplant um, and what we're doing right here, like she said, we're in the community garden that's on site at the uh, North Texas Food Bank called Jan's Garden. And right here we're standing by um, one of our eggplant beds. So we grew all of our eggplant this year um, from seed. And I would love to just take one brief quick moment um, to talk about just the duality of this plant. So if you're somebody who gardens maybe a little bit on your own, you're kind of wanting a dual purpose plant for your garden. This is a great, this would be a great addition, a great place to start with that because um, as you can see, it has a, some really bold textures with the leaves. It's a really beautiful green color um, and the lobed leaves just look really nice. So it's a really nice big plant that you can use for your garden as long as you have a sunny location. And they also, I don't know if y'all can see them, but they do have some nice purple blooms, which you know what? I don't even see any that are close by right now. But when they open up, they're a nice pale blue, purple color and they're outward facing and they have a yellow center and they're just really, really nice. So um, if you're wanting to kind of dabble in the edible landscaping, this is a great plant to start with. So um, what we have here, like I said, we have the Black Beauty variety. This is what we use um, to grow in our garden this year. And there are, as Shereen mentioned, there are a lot of different types of eggplant and varieties of eggplant you can use to grow and to cook with. So. Um, if you want to look at some of those varieties that do really well up here in North Texas, you can go to Texas A&M AgriLife Extension's website, and they have a whole list of, of eggplant varieties that will do really well in our area if you want to explore that. So I'm going to go in a little bit um, into detail as to how we grew our eggplant here at the food bank, um, because growing eggplant from seed can be a little bit tricky. So again, we grew it from seed. Um, we started it. When you're growing eggplant from seed, you have to make sure that you 
throw it on a heat mat. Same with tomatoes and same with peppers. So a heat mat is basically what it sounds like. You just plug it in and it's a mat that you'll set your seed tray on and it'll warm up the soil because eggplant need warm soil to germinate. So that'll help it germinate. They need to be on the heat mat for about a week, so five to seven days. They need to be on the mat until they germinate. In my case, they were on the mat for two weeks because they didn't germinate when they were supposed to. So I actually took them off the mat. I didn't lose hope. And they actually, all of them germinated a couple weeks later. So you never quite know what you're working with with nature, but um, that's how ours turned out. So it turned out well. Um, so yes, you'll need that heat mat and then you'll need to put some kind of dome over the seed tray. A lot of seed trays come with domes. Um, but if you don't have that, you can use saran wrap. I've also used that before just to make sure you keep that humidity um, in that dome and make sure that the plants stay moist. So um, again, whenever you're doing it by seed, you want to start it about two months before your average last frost date. And this is if you're starting it um, in the winter time. So we started ours late January, early February. Um, and then we were able to grow it and pot it up to four inch pots, let it grow to a four inch seedling. And then we put it in our beds here. Again, like I mentioned, we use the Black Beauty variety and that's just your classic eggplant variety. So um, this is gonna be a nice bell shape, a dark, a dark purple color. Um, it's just the one that comes to your mind is what we grew here. It's an all around pretty good plant. Um, for the Black Beauty variety, you're gonna get about four to six fruits per plant. And then each of those fruits will be about four to six inches long. Um, so that's just a good kind of thing to keep in mind whenever you're growing yours. And there are different varieties that you can use for different things, different sizes, different shapes, different colors different production amounts. So just keep that in mind whenever you're deciding what variety you wanna grow, what do you wanna cook with it? Um, so that can help you decide what variety you wanna use. So let's talk about the growing requirements. All plants need growing requirements, right? But with eggplant, um, they're gonna need full sun and at least eight hours of sunlight a day. And their ideal growing temperatures are 70 to 90 degrees. Of course, in Texas, we're gonna have days, a lot of days well above 90. And we have this summer, of course, and these eggplant are beautiful. They're doing just fine. So don't let the heat of summer scare you off from trying some of these, um, these summer vegetables because they're, they're, they love the heat. They want the heat. So um, our eggplant are thriving. So if you want to try it, please do. Um, another thing to note is eggplant will be ready to harvest once there are those four inch seedlings and you put them in the bed or your pot, whatever you're growing them in. Once you put them in as transplants, it'll take 65 to 80 days from that transplant point until you can harvest any fruit. Um, and again, that number is gonna vary depending on what kind of variety that you're using. Um, so whenever you're planting them, whether it's in a bed or in the ground or wherever it is, if you're planting multiple plants, you wanna make sure that you plant each plant two to two and a half feet apart. And if you're planting them in rows, you wanna make sure those rows are three to four feet apart. I obviously crammed what I could in this bed. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend planting your eggplant this close together. Um, but we did here and they're actually doing just fine. Um, so again, you never quite know what you're gonna get. Um, but the reason that that space requirement is so important is because it reduces competition for light, nutrients, and moisture. Um, it's also gonna reduce the, um, the, the chance for pests and diseases because all plants are susceptible to something. Um, one of those diseases could be powdery mildew. And that's just a thin layer. It looks like kind of like powdered sugar. Um, it coats your leaves and um, it prevents them from growing healthy and big and strong. So, um, we actually don't have that here on our plants this year, which has been lovely, but that is a risk that you can take if you don't space out your plants correctly. Another thing to know as well is when your plants start producing, they can produce really heavy fruit. So if your plant starts to tip over and kind of start to lean, that's okay. Um, bamboo steaks that you can get at Home Depot or any of your local garden stores. And that's also where you can get your heat mats as well. Um, they they're gonna be your lifesaver. Bamboo steaks and jute or some kind of twine. And you'll just stake that bamboo steak right next to um, right next to a really thick stalk. And you'll just tie that twine on there, make sure there's a little bit of room for that, for that uh, stem to move around in. And that'll be enough staking, enough support for them to do well. I also wanna mention uh, moisture. Moisture is really important for plants as we all know. Um, but with moisture, you want your beds to be moist. That's the key word. You don't want them to be wet. If they're wet, they need to dry out. They need that time to dry out. Otherwise the roots will rot and your plant will die. So all your hard work will, will not go to waste, but it won't, won't produce any fruit. So um, just make sure that you keep your beds moist. Um, and another thing to know is anytime you're growing really any fruits or vegetables, you wanna make sure that you add compost. 
You want to add compost to the bed at some point in the growing season. Normally to your beds, you want to add it mm, one to two times, maybe even three times a year. Um, we add a compost to this bed very early on in the year. And we are, um, this, these plants started producing eggplant like a month ago, and we've been harvesting them once or twice a week um, ever since. So we, since they were producing really heavily, we decided to um, add compost to the base of the plant. And I'll show you what that looks like here. I hope we can see it. These leaves are really big, uh, but this is our compost that we have here. It's already kind of um, degraded just a little bit. Um, got, it's decomposed into the bed, um, but we did add quite a few handfuls just around the base of the plant to add some more nutrients because compost, um, compost helps retain moisture as well as help with airflow and provide nutrients. And it also Okay, so I think we're we're having some uh, challenges with the feed. We're just going to give it a second here for Emily and Megan to join back. Uh, when you're trying to work from home and you're trying to do different things, I mean, you know, this is the reality we live in. So that's okay. That's all right. We'll give them a minute minute to hop back on. In the meantime, if you guys have questions, please throw them in. Uh, we're starting to see folks come in and they're tagging Yumlish Live. Yeah, see that. <laughs> Oh, the joys of hey. the summer. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, can you guys um, hear us okay? Okay, so I just harvested my eggplant. Um, I cut it off the vine. Again, just to recap, I'm not sure when it cut off, um, but this green cap right here is the calyx, and that's just a protective, um, it protects the flower bud before it opens, and there are thorns on it. So do be careful when you're harvesting. Maybe wear some gloves. Obviously, I didn't have mine on today, um, but they will poke you. I had that experience earlier this week, and it did hurt. So, um just be mindful of that whenever you're harvesting bees. And again, just to reiterate, you wanna make sure that your eggplant is a nice glossy purple color all around. This is the dull one, this is the shiny one. So I hope that you can see the difference through your screens. Um, but this one, again, if it's dull, that means it'll be bitter and it'll be really difficult to cook with. So now that we know how to harvest our eggplant, um, and you may be thinking, you know, I. I would love to do this, but I don't know. I don't have space for this, or I only have a balcony or a back porch, and that's totally okay. Um, what we're gonna do now is we are going to take you over to our demo table. Um, and what I have is a five gallon bucket planner already made, and you can make this at home. It's great for any spot, no matter how much space you have, um, as long as it's in a sunny location. So what you're gonna need for this is gonna be a five gallon bucket. You can get a food grade one at Home Depot if you'd like to. Um, we also, you'll also need 
um, a drill. I use a spade bit for mine. You need to drill holes in the bucket. You'll also need um, rocks or some kind of material to put in the bottom of your bucket. You'll need compost, Osmocote if you want to use some kind of fertilizer. And then you'll also need um, potting soil. Potting soil, compost, and Osmocote will take up um, the media that we're going to plant it in. So, and then of course you'll need your plant or your seeds. So to start off first, um, I drilled holes in the bottom of my bucket and I used it with a 3 8 inch spade drill bit. I'm hoping that y'all can see that. Um, but I used a 3 8 inch spade drill bit. I drilled about eight to 10 holes in the bottom of the bucket. And then I didn't space them out. Like I didn't measure out how many or where, but it's about eight to 10 will be sufficient. And then I drilled four holes on the outside of the bucket. Um, in four different areas and they're about an inch from the bottom. So once I drilled my holes, the next step is to add rocks to the bottom. The reason we're drilling so many holes and we're putting those rocks in the bottom is of course drainage. If you have a pot and doesn't have adequate drainage, then what that, what's gonna happen is that your um, soil is gonna compact and it's gonna stay wet and it won't be able to dry out and it'll rot just like we talked about. So whenever you're, um, once your holes are drilled, we're just gonna, I'm gonna add rocks. I just found these in our garden and they were perfect. Um, they're just flat, they're a little bit big, um, and I'm putting these at the bottom to help that water drain out. You can also use coconut core if you want to use that. You can use smaller pebbles. Um, again, it's just a bigger object that will help more water flow through. So the next thing I did was um, mix together potting soil. Want to make sure you use potting soil, not topsoil. Potting soil, compost, and I used Osmico. I have some right here. It's for flowers and vegetables. I just um, picked this up at the hardware store. And um, yeah, you can mix this in here if you want to. It's a slow release fertilizer. It says it's good for flowers and vegetables, so it's safe on your edible plants. So once I mixed all those things together, I put them in a bucket and I filled up the bucket until about an inch from the top. Once I did that, all you need to do is, I just planted my plants. I use pepper transplants. This is obviously not eggplant, but this season I chose to plant peppers in here. You can, you can plant eggplant, you can plant all different kinds of things in five gallon buckets because it's deep enough for an adequate root system. If you're choosing to plant eggplant in here, I would suggest only um, planting one plant in here. And you can plant, if you're doing it by seed, plant two to three seeds and then thin it out into that one strongest one. And then if it is, um, if you're doing transplants, again, I just put one in here. Um, and then, yeah, and if you are wanting to fertilize your plant and you're kind of concerned about that, we use here at Jam's Garden, we try to be as organic as possible. So we use organic liquid kelp um, liquid kelp is amazing. It's good for everything. You kind of can't overuse it. Um, if you just spray, it works best if you spray the leaves. So I just fill it up and dilute it in a little spray bottle like this. And, um, you just spray the leaves about once a week or once every other week and you'll be good to go. It's like compost. It will really help add nutrients and build immunity, um, for your plants. And as you can see here, or I hope you can see, um, I also use bamboo and twine to stake these. So it's really a great um, size to use for wherever you live and whatever your space is that you have available. This will be a great addition to your house um, or wherever you live. So now that we know everything about eggplant and growing, we're gonna finish that garden to table cycle and take it on over to Megan, who's gonna show us a delicious and simple recipe that we can make with eggplants. Perfect. Awesome, Let's get our camera set up. Thank you so much for teaching us that. I, I have a small um, patio myself, so I love learning different ways to um, grow produce in a small area because um, that, that's all I have. So I love learning things like that. I didn't even know about the five gallon bucket, so that's amazing. I really love that. Um, okay, so we're gonna do the sauteed eggplant recipe dish. Um, we're gonna go ahead, before we introduce the ingredients and the cooking equipment, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna heat up three tablespoons of oil in our skillet. So one, two, three, a little bit more for good measure. It's a big skillet too. And we're gonna turn this up to around medium heat to let that um, get hot. So it's important to heat up your pan and your oil at the same time. Um, this kind of ensures that food does not soak up too much of that oil and it also keeps the food from sticking to the pan. So that's super important. We're gonna let that kind of swish around in there. Awesome, so while that's heating up, we're gonna go ahead and introduce our ingredients as well as our cooking equipment. So 
So all the cooking equipment that you're going to need for this is a large pot to boil your pasta. I have already done that and it is keeping warm. Um, although it's hot, so hot out, probably didn't even need to keep it in a, in a, in a um, heater. But that is keeping warm on the side. Um, you'll also need a large skillet. I have an electric skillet right here, but that's just because we're out in the garden. A large skillet is just fine. And then some sort of spoon or spatula to stir everything up, a knife, and then a cutting board. One trick about the cutting board, if it is like really wobbly on your table, you can get like a slip mat. This is actually just like a um, one of those inserts from like your cupboard or your drawers that you use. So these are really great for slip mats on cutting boards. I don't have one of these at home. So what I do is I wet a paper towel and I just put it underneath the cutting board and it keeps it from slipping around. So that's been super helpful for me. Awesome. And then for ingredients, we have olive oil, which we just used, the pasta, which I mentioned before, whole grain pasta. We have our eggplant. This is our eggplant from the garden. So we have that one large eggplant. And then we have um, a one large onion and then garlic. Uh, which I already have diced up and minced. And then we have um, petite diced tomatoes canned. And this one has basil, garlic, and oregano in it. So that just adds a really a lot to the sauce. But if you don't have um, the basil and oregano in your diced tomatoes, you just have regular, that is completely fine. Just add the uh, basil and oregano in yourself later. We'll also have pepper and then some Parmesan cheese to top it all off. So let's see. So you see that oil is kind of um, swishing around kind of like water. That's how you know your oil is hot and your pan is ready to go, right? When that oil just kind of moves around super easily. So that is all hot and ready to go. So we are gonna go ahead and add our onions and our garlic to that. Get all that garlic off, that's my favorite. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. And then we are looking for translucent onions. Okay, that's how we're gonna know that we are ready and the onions are all cooked. They're gonna be nice and translucent and that garlic is gonna be really aromatic. So I personally love garlic. It's one of my favorites. Um, so usually when recipes call for like two garlic, I usually double it and I add four. So just add as much garlic or as little garlic as you like. Garlic is um, an anti-inflammatory and it also boosts your immune system. So go crazy on the garlic if you like. So we're going to let that cook. And while that cooks, we're, uh, while that cooks, we're going to cut our eggplant. So an easy way uh, to cut your eggplant to make sure that everything is diced all nicely, we're going to cut the um, top off. And what is, what is this called again, Emily? The calyx. The calyx. So we're going to cut the calyx off the top. We're also going to cut a little bit off the bottom as well. Just like that. And then all this eggplant is rolling around like crazy. So we're also going to cut a part off of one side of it, just a small sliver. So then we have a good base for our eggplant so it doesn't roll around. Then from there, all you're going to do is start cutting in uh, lengthwise, nice thin strips. Just like that. Try to get them all the same size so we can have nice even cook all the way around. And this one, this egg looks great. Nice, uh, nice safety there. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Use the claw, right? <laughs> okay, then you're going to turn them around again. Maybe do two piles. It might be a little hard to cut if you stack them all. And you're going to cut them lengthwise, lengthwise one more time. And again, try to get nice even cuts in there so we can have... We can have even uh, eggplant all the way through, so it's cooked even all the way through, so you don't get some eggplant that's gushy, um, some that's burnt. Let me stir my onions up here. This is this is my favorite mm. smell is the onions and the garlic. It's my favorite part of cooking anything. This part right here. Okay, then you're gonna turn them one more time and cut cut them crossways. Nice. Dice eggplant. One more time there. Perfect. And then turn this one sideways and dice those up as well. So again, this is just going to ensure that all of the eggplant is cooked evenly and cooks all the way around. Awesome. So our onions are nice and translucent, as you can hopefully see. There's 
no smell vision, so you can't smell, but they smell really good. Smells delicious. Uh, Emily can attest. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we're gonna add our eggplants all in there. And then we're gonna cook our eggplant for about five-ish, six-ish minutes, um, just to, just until they are nice and tender, okay? So stir that around in there. Perfect. So we're looking for nice and tender eggplants in there. And then while this is cooking, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the benefits of eggplant and how great they are for you. But first, I wanted to um, talk about a common thing that Emily even touched on as well is the bitterness of eggplants. I've heard so many people say that they've got eggplant and it's bitter and they didn't like it and they never try them again. And it's such a great fruit because it's a fruit, not a vegetable. Um, and so the reason for some of that bitterness is exactly what Emily mentioned uh, back in the garden is that sometimes they're picked too late. And so that causes a lot of the bitterness. You think about how long it takes for an eggplant to reach your uh, fridge or to reach your hands to make a meal. Um, it's, it's quite a long time. So some of those eggplants can turn bitter. Fortunately though, they actually have kind of modified the eggplant throughout the years to kind of grow out a lot of that bitterness, which is really cool. Um, so most of the eggplant that you buy in the store shouldn't have any of that bitterness in it. So you should be good um, and you shouldn't have to worry about that. Stir this up. to um, use it within the day. So it'll be good in the fridge for about five to seven days. Um, and so be sure to use it within that time because eggplant is very, they're very sensitive to temperature. So just keep that in mind. And then eggplant is also a great meat substitute. So like they're kind of similar to mushrooms in the fact that um, you have mushroom burgers, you have all these mushroom meat substitutes. Eggplant is the same way. It has that same meaty, savory texture, just like mushrooms do. Um, and just like meat does. So they're a really great meat substitute. So if you wanna do like meatless Mondays, or you're just looking for a really easy dish to use uh, during the week, this one is super easy, super simple, and you won't be missing that meat. If you do miss the meat, you can add chicken to this if you want. Um, just try to keep the eggplant in there just to try something new. If you haven't tried it before, um, you will like it. It's so good. Emily's had it before. Mm -hmm. We'll have it at the end. Um, so just try it. You can feel free to add meat if you want, but try meatless Mondays. It's always kind of fun uh, to switch it up some. So eggplants are also very good for your heart. They support your heart health. They're cholesterol free. They're low in fat. They also have lots of fiber in them. So I don't know if you remember from like elementary school, fiber acts like a broom and it sweeps out all of the bad stuff in your body. So we need lots of fiber every single day. Um, eggplant actually provides about 5% of your daily value of fiber. So that great source of fiber that you're getting all from um, a fruit. So a great source of fiber. So another great thing about eggplant. They also, oh, and fiber also makes you feel full longer, right? You hear that all the time. So if you eat this, you won't be missing that meat because this will help you feel full longer too because it has all that fiber in it. It's also a rich source of antioxidants. <clears throat> so this is, a lot of this is found in the skin of eggplant. So try to keep that skin on if you can. Um, if you just like can't stand it, you can even um, kind of like peel off like little strips of the eggplant so there's still skin, some skin on. So it'll be some skin and some not just if you can't stand it. But try it with the skin just so you're getting more of those antioxidants in there. And antioxidants are great for our body because they protect us against um, cells called free radicals, right? Or they protect our cells against free radicals. Free radicals, can, free radicals can play a role in heart disease, cancer, all of that. So antioxidants are super important and those come in fruits and vegetables. So make sure that you're eating all your fruits and vegetables and try eggplant because it's a great source. Okay, I think these are good to go. So we are going to add our canned tomatoes. Let me get, pop this open. And you're adding the tomatoes in with the juice, juice and all. So super easy, you don't even have to drain them. So it's going straight in there. Just like that. Awesome. And the, um, stir this up real fast. Oh, those tomatoes. The basil and the oregano. Mm -hmm. I smell it. Oh, yeah. It smells so good. Um, 
So again, if you have just regular diced tomatoes, you can go ahead and add that basil and oregano. I'm going to add some black pepper to this as well. And also, you don't need um, to add any more salt to this dish because the canned tomatoes has all the salt that you need. So that's an extra ingredient that you don't need to put in there because um, the canned tomatoes provide all that for you. Perfect. We're, this is going to heat up for a little bit. Because again, they're just canned tomatoes. So they're already cooked. So we're just pretty much heating them up. Um, some other fun facts about eggplant while this is heating up is that eggplant is also high in vitamin C, which is great for your immune system. We all need that right now. And they're also high in vitamin A, so it's good for your hair, your skin, as well as your eyes. It's also, weirdly enough, a great source of folic acid or folate, which um, is important for pregnant women, and it helps um, tissues grow and cells work. So that's an interesting fact, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And they're also very high in potassium. So potassium can actually help lower your blood pressure um, it can actually help ease tension in um, your blood vessel walls. So actually, the more potassium you eat, the more sodium you lose through your urine. So potassium kind of has a um, like an opposite effect that sodium does in your body, which I think is really cool. So eggplant is just an overall great fruit to eat. Um, and you can do so many things with it. You can even make like lasagna layers with it. Um, like when we were cutting it and we had those thin slices, you can put those as layers in a lasagna. Eggplant Parmesan, that's a really popular one. You can use it in all sorts of things. Okay, I think this is ready. It's that, I mean, it's that fast, right? So we're gonna get our whole grain pasta out up here. And I'm gonna plate it up and we're gonna try it. All right, so we're gonna put some whole grain pasta on the bottom here. And then we're going to put, oh my gosh, this is so colorful. Hold on, I'm going to, I got to show it. I got to show it up close to the camera. It's the best. Oh, little, okay, look at this. Can you see that? Look how great that looks. Nice and colorful. Okay, Emily. Come try it and tell me what you think. I would love to. And tell me what you would add if you would take anything away. Yeah. I'm always, I mean, you got to make these dishes your own, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have some for myself because I'm hungry. That is so good. It has all the flavor you need in it. Like the pepper, um, what was it? Did you use canned tomatoes with seasoning, right? Yes. That makes it even easier when you don't have to add your own extra Right? Because then if you're out or you forgot any, it's all in the can. You got it. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So good. I would 100% make this mm -hmm. during a weeknight. I think I would add something like spicy to it, like red pepper chili flakes or something, because I love spice. Mm. But those tomatoes and the oregano is so good. Mm -hmm. I think I I think I'd add capers to it. I don't know that's a little off the wall ingredient there, but no, that's fancy. I, I think like it sounds it. so good with this. No, I love it. That's amazing. I love that. Awesome. Okay, I think we're going to answer some questions. Mm -hmm. If we have any questions. Yep, so we'll pass the screen for that. Yes. There I am. Okay, thank you so much, Emily and Megan. They're loading back on here so they can hear us. Um, so with that, drop your questions in. If you have any questions about the way it was cooked, uh, any particular questions about ingredients, anything in particular about um, any of the benefits for eggplants or other recipes. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box. We're going to do a Q&A right now with Emily, with Megan. If you want to know how to grow your own eggplant, if you want tips on it, anything you want, now's the time to ask. So um, I did have, so I'm just going to scroll through because there were a ton of questions that came in. Emily, Megan, I see you guys chowing down. My God, that looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good. It's dinner time, right? <laughs> I love it. And I love the freshness of it. So talk about garden to table. Can't get any fresher than that. You pull it right out of your garden. You come over here. You chop it up. You saute it. Turn it into this delicious pasta. Can't go wrong. No. Yeah. Awesome. So All these ingredients are so easy to find. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, and that's what I love about this. So even the ingredients, I mean, didn't it was easily available ingredients. So we had we had the tomatoes. We can find canned tomatoes. We can get the eggplant from your produce department at your at your local grocery store. You can pick up, you know, even the onion, the garlic. I mean, so simple. And then you made it. And so I would love to know, um, Megan, when you were putting this recipe together, essentially, you substituted out some ingredients, right? So what are some unhealthy ingredients switch outs that you would recommend for pasta like this? Yeah, so um, for we chose whole grain pasta. So whole grain is going to provide um, a lot more nutrients for you than refined grains. If you uh, don't want to do whole grain pasta or if you're gluten free, you can also do like rice cauliflower. That's also a really great option. You can do quinoa. Um, there's tons of different options that you can do with this dish. That's what I like about it because you take a main ingredient like eggplant and tomatoes and onions and you can you can add bell pepper to it. You can add, like we were talking about before, meat to it. So there's, there's lots of different ways that you can make this your own and use this recipe as a base and just kind of take it to however, well, you know, your eating style is. So um, that, I think that's some other things. You can even do rice with it if you want, like just mm. regular brown rice. That would be a great option as well. But there's tons of different you, can and you can't you can't go wrong with this it seems like it so someone asked so, so uh, valerie made a comment that she's an avocado oil gal um <laughs> and you could i guess you could cook with that too right um yeah. and so stephanie asked do you always use olive oil and then what do you think of other kinds of oil people seem to be using these days yeah so oil oils like i always say it's really up to you um, cause some of the oils out there, they have a very strong taste, right? So, um, like avocado oil is a great neutral, neutral oil. It also depends on what you're cooking. So olive oil is great for low and medium cooking styles. Um, canola oil is great for hot, like a, a high heat cooking. Um, the only one I would probably really kind of stay away from is vegetable oil. It's just a lot of, um, really cheap and highly processed oils kind of thrown together. Uh, but other than that, like it's really up to you and your preference. Um, and what you're cooking and what you want that to taste like, right? Because some of those oils do have a very strong consistency. I usually do olive oil because I like the flavor of it and it has a pretty mild flavor to me and I usually just do low to medium cooking anyways. Um, but it's completely up to you and your cooking style. Go crazy and try all those different oils. There's tons of oils out there these days. I have never tried avocado oil. Uh, my husband is actually allergic to avocados and so I've never had to try. I've never gotten to try it, but um, I need to because I've heard great things about it. Okay. Next question. Next question is from Nolan. So Nolan's asking, how long can I let these uh, onions sweat for? So how how long would uh, would you recommend for the on the onions? About two to three minutes. Okay. Okay. And let me tell you, you blew everyone's mind when you called eggplant a fruit. No. Is that crazy? <laughs> it's insane. Tomatoes are fruit. The things that are fruits are crazy. Mm -hmm. It blows my mind too. <laughs> I just know in the horticulture world, it's so it's actually a berry to get even more like mind blown. Which isn't that nuts? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. It is a berry, um, just because of how it grows and um, the, the whole berry scene. I won't go on a tangent, but it is a great area for a lot of people in the horticulture world, <laughs> like a plant world. So, um, yeah, it's full of a lot of fun facts. It's the Very neat. That's awesome. So next question is from Marina, and Marina asks. What what are the best products to grow instead of buying at the grocery store for you, Emily? Okay, sorry, can you repeat the question? What are some best products to grow instead of buying at the grocery store? So the best produce you would recommend. Mm -hmm. So growing versus buying. The thing yep. with growing is that it takes a while, right? Like we may have one eggplant that's in our five gallon bucket, but it's and it's gonna produce quite a bit. The problem is, is that's going to take a while to mature to get that plant. So um, for me, I would say lettuces are worth growing because they're ready in about a month and you can just continue sowing lettuce all the time as long as it's through the cooler months, fall and even like late winter into early spring. Um, and lettuce too, you know, if you grow a couple different varieties, it's easy. You can pick off a couple of leaves. You don't have to cut the whole thing off. So that one can last a little bit longer. So I would say grow lettuces, start for sure. Pepper plants produce a lot too. So that's going to be something where even though it takes a while and same with eggplant, they produce a lot. Um, so it's just kind of that work at the front end. Um, I would say too that, um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, those are like the main ones that I would suggest like growing yourself. Um, so tomatoes, tomatoes are a funny thing. 
Good question, because tomatoes, everybody loves garden tomatoes, and yes, they do taste different than the ones in store. However, down here in Texas, they're very hard to grow. Squirrels Ooh. like them, birds like them, squirrel netting doesn't really work. So if you have a squirrel problem, good luck. That's all I can really say, because <laughs> there's not really a good remedy for that. Um, a lot of tomatoes down here that grow, like this this uh, this summer, I've been growing Roma tomatoes, and they did fantastic. People I know, it just depends on the weather. We didn't really have a lot of pests. We didn't have a lot of super high heat. So, and the evenings cooled off, which tomatoes need. So, if you're going to grow tomatoes, I would suggest Roma or cherry tomatoes. Ones that are varieties that are bigger don't really do that great down here. So, um, that's a good thing to know about tomatoes. But again, like they're going to take a while. You need to start them in the um, like late winter, and it'll take a couple months to germinate. So, they take a little more TLC. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Next question is from Valerie. Valerie's asking, what grows great next to eggplant in the garden? That is a good question. So with eggplant, you know, you can, a lot of companion planting can be, you know, growing it with herbs, you can grow it with flowers. Um, I think it's marigolds, uh, like they repel a lot of pests. So if you, the, and they can be planted with pretty much anything. So long as the, the, the plant does not shade it because marigolds need, um, they need sunlight as well. You can plant those in the bed with it. Um, one thing, pretty much eggplant, I think, from what I'm thinking, they can pretty much grow with a lot of things, except you don't want them to grow in the same bed as tomatoes or peppers, because they are from the same family. Mm -hmm. um, funny thing, I actually did that exact thing in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know what? They actually both did fine, but the tomatoes and, and even peppers and eggplants all grow to be a big size. So again, it's about that spacing. So if you're going to grow something, try to, and you want it to grow close and companion plant with this, then I would suggest growing something small. And again, marigolds are compact flowers. They repel a lot of pests. Um, so that could be a definitely a good um, a good partner with that, as well as really any um, any herbs as you just find. Okay, sounds great. We've got, let me tell you guys, we've got a ton of questions. I'm gonna try to get through as many as I can. So if you have questions, drop it in. Uh, make sure you're tagging hashtag Yumlish Live. You're cooking along with us. What you think about this cooking demonstration, keep that conversation going with us. So. Uh, next question is from Liana. She's asking, any kind of pasta uh, especially good for this, or will any kind of pasta work? Any kind of pasta really will work. Um, I think like the rotini shape or like penne shape, that will probably do a little better. But you could probably do the spaghetti noodles as well. They also make like chickpea pasta. I don't think I mentioned that in the previous question before. Uh, but they make pasta that's completely made out of chickpeas. So, again, another great gluten-free option as well really any pasta. Make this dish your own. That's always what I say. You can't go wrong. Malka is asking, is this a good dish for those with diabetes? Yes, it is. Um, I would probably do like rice cauliflower or something like that instead of um, the, the pasta. But yes, this is definitely it's fruits and vegetables. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> and so Charmaine Toast, I, I'm surprised at all the things I've learned about eggplant. Give me some of that eggplant for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert all day long. <laughs> That's maybe a little bit too much eggplant, but we'll keep it we'll keep it going. So again, guys, keep posting your questions below. Uh, ask as many questions. We got maybe a couple more minutes here. Um, so next question up is from um, Caroline, and Caroline asks, "What dairy-free garnishes could I use instead of Parmesan?" They make um, like vegan cheese if you want to try that. Um, if you do herbs, yeah, you. Oh, because there, I was actually gonna take some herbs from the garden too. <laughs> I, I was gonna run back there and like snip some and take some. But yes, you could definitely do herbs um, on top as well. You could even do like fresh parsley or fresh basil on top. Um, that would always add like a nice extra little flavor as well. Okay, nice. And so next one is, uh, there's a comment from Liana. So Liana says, apparently, I don't know the difference between fruits and veggies anymore. <laughs> You've thrown everything off for them. It's, 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 all, it's, all, it's all a mess now. <laughs> yeah, anything with seeds in it is going to be fruit. That's so even tomatoes are fruit. Yeah, easy way to remember it. Mm -hmm. Anything with seeds in it is a fruit. Okay. And so, and a potato is a vegetable. Tomato is a fruit, so eggplant is a fruit. Okay, it's, it's making sense. It's making sense. All right, I'm getting it together. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, so next one up is um, uh, so a banana is a berry, but, oh, uh, Liana, so, so Valerie says a banana 
is a berry, but a strawberry is not. That is correct. Huh. And to be honest with you, <laughs> I don't understand the nitty gritty of that myself. Um, it has to do with, I believe, it's, I think it's like the number of flowers and like, does it come from one spot or does it come from multiple spots on the plant? Um, because I was reading up on this the other day and honestly, I was confused. And you know, it was written by a professor and the professor was even like, honestly, y'all, everybody is struggling with this concept. <laughs> so y'all aren't the only ones. I'm sorry I can't elaborate too much on that, but that is a correct statement. <laughs> yeah. It's all about plant anatomy, which is Yeah, a which lot. is a whole other depth. <laughs> I seem to, I can't see you guys. I can hear you guys, but I can't see you guys. I don't know if you guys can throw in the comments box. Can you guys, can you guys see Megan and Emily still? Oh, so somehow I think I lost your video. Do you just want to refresh real quick and come right back? Yeah, sure. Okay, awesome. So by the time Emily and Megan come right back and we can see them and hear them, uh, if you have any last questions that you want to know about eggplant, about nutrition, about a certain health condition, about eating a certain way, um, talk about healthy, healthy, healthy food on the table, you guys. Um, there, yeah, there you are. I can see you now. Perfect. So Caroline asked, do you have a favorite favorite way to eat eggplant? Hmm. You know what I've had before? I've had like the eggplant rollatini. Mm. I, I'm not, I do not trust myself yet to be at that level of making that, but I feel, um, what's the word? Like I feel inspired to try it now. So eggplant rollatini I've had and it's really good. Yeah, and I've had um, a really good like eggplant lasagna that was mm. phenomenal. So I think that was the best. This is also not gonna lie, like this is also really good and super fast. So I would say this and eggplant lasagna. For sure. Agreed. Love it. Thank you so much, you guys. So I think we're toward the end of this uh, this Facebook Live event. Uh, like I talked about at the top of this, if you guys are interested in more recipes, if you guys want to see us to cook more often tag us yumlish hashtag yumlish live any kind of recipe that you want to see in the future for us to cook for you put that in you can again follow us on at yumlish like i said and again tag it yumlish live so we know what kind of cooking demonstrations you like to see in the future a huge thank you to north texas food bank and specifically to emily and to megan for coming out and let me tell you guys if you're not in dallas it is 97 degrees and these ladies are outside cooking and gardening for us. So this was an amazing, amazing cooking demonstration and gardening demonstration. Can thank you guys enough. Thank you so much for your time. And until next time, stay healthy, stay well. We will see you at the next one. Bye, y'all.